Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome. Uh, thank you, everybody, for taking the time this afternoon to uh, to join the webinar. Uh, my name is uh, Dean Spawn. I'm the uh, program director for the uh, regional investment program in the southern half of the UK. And sat with me is John Dixon, and I'm uh, director for national roads for Jacobs. Um, before we get going into uh, to the main purpose of today, just a few little uh, housekeeping rules, if we could. So if you can just make sure everybody is on mute uh, through the course, so we don't get any uh, background noise, that would be, that'll be great. Um, we will be taking questions, but I'd like to leave those questions to the end, if we could. Um, there is a Slido um, that uh, we'll be coming to shortly, the, the details of, of the code to get into that. So. Please field your questions to us uh, through Slido. And um, just a note that we are recording this uh, webinar uh, for further sharing on the on the supply chain uh, portal at a, a later date. Um, so agenda for today. Um, um, we're going to have a little uh, reminder of home safe and well, so we'll trip back through that. Um, we'll have a, a bit of a discussion about the supply chain safety um, leadership group um, and, and the, its intent and purpose and why it was established. Um, and we'll um, then spend most of the time around the key theme, which is uh, working better together through our safety forums, which is uh, the main um, purpose of today. Um, we'll talk a little bit about um, timetable and how you can all um, get involved and contribute. Um, and, and there you can see on the slide there that the, the, the event code for the Slido there is H-E-S-C-S-L-G. Um, so if you just um, search up in your browser um, slide.do, that will go straight to Slido and then you put your code in and you should have access um, straight away. So John's going to um, share a safety moment uh, with us now. Okay, thank you. So I've just picked a safety moment um, I thought was relevant to construction and designers. Um, and it's, it's a photograph from a, a project that, that uh, Jacobs has been involved in um, from a, two or three months ago, and it involved um, soil, na soil nailing activity on the site. And what you can see in that left-hand image is the soil nail itself. Um, which has on the right hand image over near where the machine is, it, that's where the, the, the solar nail was driven in, um, into the, the, the slope supporting that road. Um, and it's gone virtually um, more than 90 degrees. It's, it's, it's turned on itself and come out through the surface of the road. Now, I think, you know, we all understand that, that uh, soil nails are flexible and, and, and uh, you know, don't always go in exactly straight in the way you're pointing them. But um, for it, I've, I've certainly never been aware that they could uh, deflect so so much as that. Um, and you can just see by looking at that, that could have been a serious incident. Um, and I think that uh, the message for us on, on, on this was to certainly understand that um, these things can divert so far. Um, so stopping up the road um, in, in uh, taking away all activity which could, um, you know, be, be affected is something we need to be thinking seriously about. So as designers, we need to be, um, you know, making sure this is in our risk assessments and, uh, and obviously dealing with it on site. Uh, so I just thought it was quite a good one to, to start with, just remind people. Thanks, John. Um, so home safe and well. Um, just a, a quick recap, really. Um, HE launched Home Safe and Well back in June, and um, safe to say we've had a, a pretty positive and, and overwhelming response to our Home and Home Safe and Well um, strategy. Um, so, you know, the, the aim of this is to raise standards and improve safety right across our network. So that's for our customers, our employees, and our supply chain colleagues. That's anyone that uses, works on, in around um, our our network. Um, and, and it's different um, than 
than the five-year plan. The five-year plan previously was very much orientated about specific actions um, and uh, very focused on delivering those actions. Um, the, the intent of the home, and home safe and well strategy is to, to, to marble safety into everything, everything that we do um, and, and, and ensure that um, we've got absolutely the right focus on who it is best to own um, uh, any particular area and the outcomes um, rather than individual actions. Um, so it ensures and, and actually commits us to working um, collaboratively and working better with our supply chain. Um, and I think one of the key differences really about how it makes it really personal um, to, to individuals that are involved right, right across a diagonal cross-section of the organization and make sure that the right people are looking at the right risks that they can control. Um, here at Highways England, we absolutely recognise um, that the supply chain, our best place to deal with the supply chain uh, risks and hazards, uh, and, and they're experts in, in what they do in delivering, um, be it on site, in offices, through design work, etc. And, and there's certain things that Highways England are much better placed to own and, and manage. Um, so, you know, safety is still our number one imperative and will always be our number one imperative. And this strategy is fully endorsed and backed by the exec um, and the board. Um, so, you know, our engagement today is one of the first things that we're doing um, that comes off the back of home safe and well and, and trying to engage further across the supply chain um, as we go. Um, one of the strands of home safe and well um, was to improve our supply chain engagement and, and look at raising industry standards. Um, so what have we done there? Um, we have set up this supply chain safety leadership um, steering group, um, which is aim, which is absolutely aimed at raising those industry standards through working groups focused on our imperatives, where we collectively see the highest risks, uh, repeat incidents, um, uh, and and those those things that can injure and hurt the well-being, health, and safety of, our, of all of our people. Um, this, you know, the supply chain is supply chain safety leaders group is is seen as the apex um, supply chain safety uh, group now, um, and it's uh, there to ensure that um, we've got a collective and clear uh, governance approach, um, and that we're doing things in a consistent and um, efficient way, rather than doing things in a way that would see us um, repeat numerous. Uh, things across numerous uh, dimensions and, and avenues of both the supply chain and uh, Highways England. So why is uh, why is this important? Um, the since since 2015, you know, the safety stats we can point to some improvement there, um, which is which is good. And I think you know a lot of the groups that have been formed and have been active have played a part in that. Um, however, a lot of groups have been formed, um, and some of these are sort of, uh, you know, well, certainly we don't know exactly how, how many are out there. Um, they're a bit disparate, and they certainly lack sort of um, an overarching governance uh, and overarching direction. So, you know, so there was some feedback that some members of these groups you know, we were getting a bit uh, confused about what the priorities are. And also that, that you know the same accidents are happening again and again. So, um, so we're not necessarily learning the lessons to improve. Um, and as Dean mentioned, you know the, the, a lot of the risks that we're looking at are risks that are owned by um, you know by us as uh, principal designers and principal contractors, um, not necessarily by HE as the client, although they are involved. Um, and, and equally. You know, there's a lot of um, a lot of our safety professionals attending these meetings, um, and you know we need to look at how the outputs and, and the learning and the, the, that's achieved from these meetings, how that gets fed back and implemented effectively, um, so that we can see some improvement happening. Oops. So why have we set up? Sorry. The um, 
membership of the supply chain um, leadership group. It's been it's been picked at the moment from just a, um, a group of individuals who have in the past shown some um, you know some commitment to improving safety. Uh, it's not a, it's not safety professionals. It, it's deliberately being picked as um, uh, leadership individuals from across supply chain, across major projects, um, coverage of operational uh, work, as well as um, you know, tier tier one and tier two contractors. So you can see the list of people um, shown there, and also it includes Mark Bayard. Dean Spawn and Lucy Fell from, from Highways England. The main focus of the group is to work through task and finish groups. So um, that's what we're going to be you know, looking at in the main. And we're expecting, you know, the intent is, is that those task and finish groups will, will basically um, be the main focus of all the safety initiatives going forward. So in this Highways England supply chain, um, but this this group is uh, is not owned by Highways England, and, and you know we're keen keen to make that point. Um, the membership and the chair will rotate um, in the couple of months that we've been going and, and setting this up. Already, there's um, you know there'll be people changing out, um, so there's every opportunity for people to play their part in the in the group. Um, and certainly, immediately, there's an opportunity to play a part via the task and finish groups. The chair of the supply chain safety leadership group will sit on the collaboration board, and the group will update the executive safety committee, which is chaired by Jim. But it's not going to report into that. So. All the, so the, uh, the safety forums that um, are in operation will now start to report into the group. Um, it will be picked up via the various task and finish groups. So the, 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 there are a number of groups we expect um, you know, will feed directly into the new task and finish, finish groups, um, so we can combine their efforts effectively. The, this doesn't cover, um, you know, day-to-day -day operational project safety meetings, uh, safe, uh, safety agenda items on projects that will continue, and also um, we'll be meeting with the safety hub. I think next week, Dean and Lucy yeah. are meeting with the safety hub um, to make sure that we uh, get that connectivity from hub and see how that links in to this going forward. Um, we can't do everything at once. These are the, um, the task and finish groups that we've um, set up at the moment. Each one is chaired um, by a member of the supply chain safety leadership group. And the graphic here just shows the time scale for um, you know, achieving the, the milestones being identified on those groups. So just look, looking down the side, the side the, you can see that we're trying to tackle the issues which are um, pertinent today and, and the ones where you know we're most concerned about. So getting an incident investigation right and done in a timely manner so that we feed back and learn as soon as possible and effectively. Um, doing the improving the supply chain safety forums, which is what this is, is about today. Um, service strike avoidance, that's still happening too much. 60 miles an hour through roadworks, obviously that's to improve the, the customer experience and that has a, a, big, a big link through safety. So um, one of the groups on that. We're also looking at the, that the, uh, the housing and passport scheme. And there's been a group looking at that already. Um, that will continue to be an area of focus, how best we can tackle um, improvement of credentials and readiness of, of, of everybody who's working on the network. Also, we've got uh, IPV um, strikes group, which also covers um, the prevalence of traffic management incursions. Mental health, uh, raising mental health and um, well-being, that's is another, another group. Um, people plant interface, major area to look at 
And then also we've got excavations of temporary works, but making sure that we're linking through to um, right the way from design through to delivery in particular. So we're, we're, we're looking across all the groups at the moment to see which of the existing forums um, you know, should, can, you know, what do we need to start, stop, continue. The groups I've just mentioned there, uh, you can see there's a link there to how you can, you can get involved. And if you can use those, those, uh, those links uh, to contact the, to the relevant groups, um, we will need to do that by the 20th September. Slide, I'll slide after that. Dean, do you want to take Okay, so um, what we're really at today is um, we, we have got an ask from, from everybody as line managers, really. We're looking to, you know, cascade this through um, organisations, um, both supply chain and, and highways, highways England. We'll, Lucy and I will be doing more of this to, to Highways England staff um, in, the, in the coming uh, next two weeks. Um, but what we're really asking is uh, to, you know, using the slides today and your own sort of like background and knowledge uh, of where we've been is to discuss our safety journey and, and, and progress so far. Um, discuss the activities in the home uh, safe and well approach. And I, I suppose really what, what we're trying to get out of today really is to try and bring um, a lot of structure to all of the existing fora that exist in the place and bring them into one govern one governed area. So what we're asking you people to do really is um, if you attend or you know your people attend or chair a supply chain safety forum uh, that's already existing or a group existing, uh, please do explain to them um, what the uh, supply chain safety leadership group is about and those priority task and finish group areas that, uh, that John highlighted because um, those are the priorities as both the supply chain and, and highways England see currently. Um, ask them uh, through what they're currently doing in any of their supply chain safety fora or groups sort of uh, is adjacent to, to, to what those um, established task and finish groups are under the supply chain leadership group. And then ask them to complete the pro forma um, that's available on the safety um, supply chain portal on the hub um, and, and submit that to us by the 20th of September. Um, the whole idea is that we can get a really clear picture of all of those groups and forum that are, that are happening. We can harness all of that good work and, and direct it in a um, consistent way, in a visible way um, uh, under, the, under the governance of this supply chain safety leadership group. Um, there may be work uh, that some of the people are doing in, in forums that um, doesn't appear at the moment on, a, on, a, on one of our uh, listed priority groups that you've seen today. Um, that doesn't mean that we want to lose it. We still want to understand what's happening there because we, we also believe there will be other valuable work uh, happening um, elsewhere. Um, so please do advise us on, on those as well. Um, so as best we can, we would we, we don't really want duplicate submissions, so if we can um, ask your people to um, make sure they've had uh, a couple of conversations to ensure that uh, we're not getting several duplicates, that would be great. Um, and if, if um, as I say, um, you, your people feel that there is um, a bit of a gap um, in what we've identified as our initial priorities and some of the work that they're currently doing, then do please contact uh, Lucy. Uh, by email, and um, we'll, we'll certainly be taking that to the to the um, leadership group as well. Um, so next steps, um, myself and Lucy will be going and, and doing similar webinars to uh, the rest of Highways England through major projects and, and operationals operations on the third and 9th of September. Um, Colleagues from the supply chain and HE can register their interest in the task and finish groups by the 20th of September, please, through those uh, email addresses. And um, both myself and uh, Lucy will be uh, meeting with the hub on the 5th of September um, to ensure that there's that connectivity there. Um, and um, we will be um, supplying recordings of this webinar on the supply chain portal. Um, before we move into any 
questions. Um, I know uh, Malcolm Dare is is on the call. Who's um, uh, for those who don't know Malcolm, he's the exec director of the um, of commercial and procurement, and also lead lead exec sponsor for for this work. Um, Malcolm, I just wondered if you wanted to um, to say anything to um, in, in regards of what we've said today, or or, or or share some of your thoughts. Malcolm, are you on mute? We're having trouble with Malcolm. Okay, well we'll move on from we'll move on from that one. So at the minute we've had the grand total of. Um, hang on, I just lost connectivity on my Slido. One question up there, which is, uh, will trade associations be invited to join the supply chain safety group? Uh, associations, um, well, we, we would like to think that our um, uh, supply chain um, will, will adequately cover what we're trying to do. We are working with other groups like HTMA and, and um other safety groups to make sure that we are linked in, but there's no intention to make direct invites to trade to trade associations in, into the group. Um, uh, uh, we're trying to ensure that uh, this uh, supply chain safety leadership group is a reasonably tight group from a governance perspective. Um, I would like to think that if trade associations um, wanted to get involved, that they could get involved through the task and finish groups, Absolutely. Um, but the governance group will be will be left with um, the select members of the supply chain. Can't even add any more. Any other questions? <laughs> We've only had one question on Slido. If, I'm happy to take verbal questions if people want to high, high, uh, ask questions. Dean, can you hear me now? I can, Malcolm. Ah, uh, there you go. Found the mute key. Start in, start off, start in again. Ah, uh, technology, technology is best. Okay. My so. Phone is flashing and you're not allowed to speak, very confusing. No, off you go, Malcolm. Right, so um, what I was going to say was, I, you know, I really do encourage people to actively get involved with this because we've, we've got a real opportunity here, especially with RIS2 and the, and the commitment that drives, to really make a step change in how we do things across the enterprise, not just, you know, not just the way, say, Highways does it or someone else does it, but really to do it collectively in the best interests of the whole industry, which in turn can dissipate out elsewhere. So, um, I mean, long and the short to me is that the, you, the more people that can support to really help develop the right answers that, that push the boundaries and uh, take us forward and importantly embed it in their businesses, I think will be absolutely fantastic. So, uh, I, you know, I really do encourage people just to get involved in this and, and really help change. So, that's it. I think it's cracking. And I, the sooner we can, you know, start showing clear, tangible benefits, the more success we will breed from it. So that's really all I, I've got to say. Thanks. Thanks, Malcolm. A um, couple of other, couple of other questions that have popped up. So uh, one of them was, on what basis will the membership be rotated, and who is the group open to? So I think that the, the membership of the group is not. Um, you know, it's not a, a, a secret society with a secret no. handshake, really. Anybody that wants to be considered for um, for membership of the group can absolutely put themselves forward. Um, I would suggest um, probably the, the neatest way to do that would be um, through the, the, the existing chair of the supply chain safety leadership groups. So that's, that's James James Hullich at the moment of, of Amy. 
Um, we will be rotating. That, that uh, James is is coming off the chair in December. That he'll have, he'll have completed his duties there, and we'll be putting a new chair in. Um, we've got people that have already um, indicated their intention to again come off the the group in December because of um, retirement plans, etc. So you know, I, I think there will be an ever evolving uh, membership of that. So you know, make yourself known to to the chair. Um, oh, uh, and, and if in the short term you haven't got access to that chair's contact details, I'm sure Lucy Fell will be happy to take that up and, and bring it to the supply chain group on, on your behalf yeah. if you haven't got that contact details. Yeah, I think the, num the numbers side was a, was a factor and, um, you know, we know that there are a lot of um, like-minded people in, in leadership roles across the supply chain that uh, are as e equally uh, passionate about improving safety is, is the ones that are initially selected. So I think part of the, uh, the the remit for that group, for the new group going forward, will be to, you know, to check in and test ourselves that we're, and make sure that we are given the opportunity to, um, you know, rotate the, the group on a, the, on a regular basis. Um, I think we're looking at six months for the chair rotation. Yep. That's right. Yeah. As an example. Um, another question we've got in is um, how are we measuring behavioral based safety implementation? So we, uh, we've taken a view that um, I think on each of the task and finishes, finish groups, you know, there, there's sort of a, I suppose, what you might call a safe place and a safe work type, uh, safe people, sorry, type dimension. So, you know, the safe place is creating the, the, the right tools, the right environment, the right working practices, the right uh, control measures, um, and then the safe people is the behaviours bit. So from each of the task and finish groups, there's, there's, there will be an element of behavioural safety in each and every one of those yeah. Yeah, elements. Yeah, it runs through everything, doesn't it? And I think we did consider whether the, we should have a separate task and finish group for it. But I think it, it's one of those strands that marbles through everything, in, in certainly to that, to the, to the degree that we can measure um, that, that behavioural aspect in relation to the specific areas of, um, you know, input performance improvement we need to see on the ground. Um, the measurements will be leading indicators um, for, for, for in terms of behaviours and um, how people uh, approach. Very sure. but, um, I think we'll keep an open mind as to whether or not a, um, there's a need for a task and finish group specifically across behaviours, but initially we felt we would concentrate on those um, those areas of, of, of specific concern that needed improvement. So we've got another one here. There's two questions in on, on people and plant uh, interface. Uh, one of them is around the A14 have set up specific uh, policies in the in the past for working practices um, and, and are we being shared or are those being used? So um, the task and finish groups are absolutely delving in and cutting across um, all of the stuff that we've um, has been implemented or conceived previously to, to come up with um, new working practices. And I don't think it's practices um, you know, just in terms of policies and procedures, you know, we, we are, this group has got a, a pretty crystal uh, clear approach to actually trying to um, use the hierarchy of controls to drive a, an improved safety performance approach to so trying to actually get up that hierarchy of controls and so move away from policies and procedures but to harder controls like engineered, engineered controls. But we absolutely, to answer the question, will be taking um, any good stuff, we're happy to plagiarise anything sure. yeah. uh, and, and take it across um, those working groups. And you have to remember that you know the, the membership of the, the supply chain safety leadership group can reach back into its own organisation. It can re reach into HE projects, other external industry projects, etc. And there's good representation initially from from the A14 contractors yeah. um, supply chain. So I very much expect that to be. Uh, Feeding through. There was, a, there was a one on how was the uh, attendance for this call. Uh, 
how did that come about? Um, I think what we've recognised in, in um, using the mailing list that we had is that we need to update that mailing list because there was a few um, few uh, anomalies on it. So um, yeah, we are um, certainly High Wizards England will be working um, to just tidy up that mailing list for the right contacts. What the specific concern was there? If there was a concern. They were reaching the right people, I think. Yeah. Yeah, we used the uh, engagement council mailing list. So, um, if, if there's some people missing off that, we also need to uh, need to up update that. Question there about the, the um, suggestion for the people plant interface group to start as soon as possible. All these groups are starting now. Um, in terms of the person who's going to sponsor that group and lead that group from the, the, the supply chain safety leadership group has been identified. Um, there's a plan in place, um, but as, as we're saying here, every opportunity up to the 20th of September for people to get involved and, um, uh, and, and contribute additionally to those groups. But yeah, there is work under, underway already. Is it possible to show the task and finish group leader email address email addresses again? Yeah, we can do that. And and this obviously this pack will be made available to everybody that's um, that was invited to yeah. the meeting. But if you, you can see the emails there, I've just been popped back up. I think we've exhausted existing we done that one. How will a group draw in experience, best practice from other sectors to accelerate our learning? That's a given that it must do that. Yeah, I think. Um, and if it wasn't said in, this, in the presentation, it should, it, we, we should have been. But we're expecting that um, you know the, 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 the people in the leadership, these leadership roles in this group, have the um, uh, the contacts and the ability to draw in. The right expertise from, from other sectors in, into uh, the highways. Yeah, absolutely. But we're not. We, we do actually want the best um, from the supply chain. Um, for, uh, you know, not just from the highways sector, but from across the sector. So if we're seeing seeing particularly good practice from the supply chain um, uh, experiences in other sectors, we, we actually do want we, we do want that. Um, you know, we have at Highways England also got established um, industry forums and links with organisations like HS2, um, Water Industry, Infrastructure Group, etc. So um, we, we do also harness those, that, that best practice. I think we've I think we've covered all of the questions. Oh, a couple more. A fourteen has made leaps forward with regards to reducing the risk from PPI and UT. These systems must be yeah, I mean these systems must be implemented nationwide. So that that again that's about uh, A14 has done some good work and, and, and spent some time um, establishing some robust procedures. Absolutely, you know, the, uh, the idea of these task and finish groups is that these will be, and um, ac across the network, we will be operating these practices across the network. So where we pick up that uh, good work practices, which reduced incident rates and, and, um, and near misses, etc. Then they, the, the whole intent is that everything is is rolled out across nationally. And it's a key in a key sort of component of how this group needs to operate is, is, is making sure that we pick up on all the um, the good practice and share that for wider implementation. Definitely. Okay. As a, as a challenging one, we talk about mental health. How are we making progress in setting commercial environments between supply chain layers that recognises this threat to well-being? I think what is, I think that question is: How do we ensure that we are not just uh, 
pushing stuff downhill to the lower tiers of the supply chain to, to soak up mm. and um, soak up all of the uh, all of the um, stress um, and, and pressures there. I'll ask I'll ask my supply chain that question. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a good good question actually. Um, and we you know we need to make sure that we you know we pass down the supply chain um, you know uh, proper coverage of our of our obligation as as, as um, in terms of a, as, as a client or designer principal designer principal contractor that, that, that those are properly passed on um, and we know that where we don't provide you know when we when we're engaging the supply chain we're we're actually the client. Or, you know, we need to think about ourselves as a client, um, and how you know are we giving them providing enough resources and enough time, and, and, and an appropriate contracting structure um, to enable them to do the job safe. Uh, it's absolute imperative. Um, uh, it's a good question, actually. Pick up on that one. The groups. As the last question, now will this group be looking at cultural maturity? Um, I suppose you have to ask yourself, what, you know, whose culture? Because uh, we, you know, we we've got a culture. Um, at High Rose England, each of the um, different supply chain will have their culture. Um, it, it, it's, a, it's a good question. It's not one I don't think I've necessarily got the answer to because then you're, are, are we trying to collide numerous cultures together to get one cohesive culture? Um, I think, you know, the, the enduring culture that we're, we're looking for is to, uh, certainly through this group, if it's not a culture, certainly uh, an ambition and a, and a drive is to ensure that, you know, whatever we're doing, we're always seeking that highest level of control that we can put in place to protect our people. And uh, we're trying to move away from that, that the procedural approach. Yeah. Um, but, but there's not an intent currently. Um, and, and we have to bear in mind, obviously, that um, we are a very uh, new forum. Um, but certainly it, it's... It, it certainly isn't something I would cross off the list at the moment. It would, um, it, it, you know, when, once we actually start to land some of these things, I'd like to think that that will start to create its culture yeah. itself a little bit on, on, on its own and create a life of its own. Um, but at the minute, it's not one of those groups that has got um, a, a sponsor or a drive behind it. I think, you know, we all know that um, to drive culture, uh, you know, safety culture and behavioural safety improvement, um, there's, a, there's a huge element of that starts with leadership um, and you know, that's one of the key things about the group is, you know, we, we've got a lot of a lot of existing safety groups doing great stuff, are we capturing it and implementing it further and further afield and as that question was saying about, um, you know, we're doing good stuff on projects but are, are we doing it across the, across the uh, the piece. So I think the formation of a leadership group that can can um, take on on that and actually, you know, live and breathe and demonstrate that uh, you know we are making improvement across and not just in in vertical vertical silos. Um, that's a huge sort of underpin of, of 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 what this group's about, and I think of what Home Safe and Well is about. Absolutely. So we have absolutely exhausted those questions now. Um, I'll start to sum up, I think, um, and then um, if any questions pop up in the meantime, we'll uh, we can happily flick back. So I think you know, in summary, um, you know, John outlined you know where where um, where we've gone collectively with. Um, you know, things like the AFR, and, and, and I think everyone can be quite quite proud of those achievements in terms of taking it from the position it was to where it is today. Um, you know, we've, we've outlined today a new 
new approach um, that we're focusing on on risk and performance. Um, we have established the, um, the sort of supply chain safety leadership group, um, and, and that main focus is to try and deliver some real hard, tangible improvements um, to the way we manage hazards on the network and through, through these task and finish groups. Um, and, and we're trying to, you know, harness all of that stuff that's happened before through existing groups and, and bring that together in these task and finish groups. Um, please do get involved um, and where you think you can add value, please do get involved. Um, we don't want people just to turn up at events because it appears to be the right thing to do. We want um, these to be really focused forums. Um, so please do, um, as requested, um, speak to, you know, if you're chairing a, a, a forum, please fill in the pro form and return it by 20th September. If some of your people are, please, please encourage them to get that done and, and back to us by the 20th of September. Um, and um, if you uh, are minded, there are some um, videos about the supply chain safety leadership group where you can actually see um, the, the the members of the supply chain safety leadership group giving their thoughts and discussions on on the um, on the leadership group itself. Um, this presentation and um, and the recording will be on the supply chain portal and, and the hub if if um, you need that for reference. Um, so I'm going to give people another minute or so, see if uh, there's any more questions coming in. Um, it seems to have gone quiet for a little bit on the Slido, so um, I'm just now going to uh, close um, and just finally ask Malcolm if you've got any any closing remarks. Malcolm, if technology uh, if technology permits, I think it may be working. <laughs> it is. I can hear you. Uh, no, I mean I would just like to echo what what you said, Dean. I think this is a a real cracking opportunity for people to get involved. Um, and the key thing is that. There is that involvement from the entire supply base, you know, as much as possible. But we do have to be seen to deliver. So the, the task and finish groups have got to have got to deliver what they commit to uh, in the time frames that, that, that they're setting out, because the credibility will be born from that delivery and embedding, um, which will make it very, very powerful. If, if, uh, if collectively we can do that, then we have a real opportunity to make a step change and take things forward that builds on what's gone on in the last couple of years. So, um, as I said, you know, I fully support it and, and really encourage people to get involved and uh, deliver the results to benefit everyone. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Malcolm. Yeah, that, that's a good point, actually. And, and you know, the, when the group met uh, last week, um, you know, there was a lot of discussion around the fact that we have to be showing, we have to be seen to be doing something and making a difference. And that, that will start... Um, you know, within the well, it starts now, but I'm sure if we get to December um, and um, you know we can't show um, some clear uh, progress and, and clear outputs from the group um, that are going to make a difference and are making a difference, um, you know there'll be there'll be questions asked um, and we'll be shaking things up again. But I'm hoping that the group's you know is, is seen as a as a positive because you know there are a lot of there's a lot of things going on, but it's nice to understand that where you are involved in a in a safety initiative or a task and finish group, um, you know it's good to know that uh, it has got the backing of um, you know leadership in the in the supply chain in Highways England, um, and that you know the framework is there to. To, you know, that, that we can be accountable as a, as a combined supply chain for all of these these groups and for the work that's done and, and, for, imp and for actually implementing it on the ground across the programmes, across Highways England's network and operations um, to real, you know, really make a difference. Right. Thanks, everybody. Um, really appreciate everyone's time uh, attending this um, session today. Um, um, you've got all of the links email addresses so if if you need to ask any questions please do use those contact details
Thanks very much, um, and uh, good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.